Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about the Ahsoka series and more. Today there's going to be no jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. After the massive news that Hayden Christensen is going to be in the Ahsoka series, we've got another big update for the show. A new main character who goes by the name of Riz is going to be cast. Now it's very important to emphasize that Riz is a main character, not a supporting role. The source for this is the Illuminati and they've reported that a young male character named Riz is going to play a significant role in Ahsoka's journey in the show. Let's dive straight into it and see what they had to say. Ahsoka new character details for the highly anticipated Star Wars series exclusive. The Illuminati have managed to uncover some more exciting details about the Ahsoka series with a new character description. According to our sources, the series is looking to cast a man in his 20s to play another lead character named Riz. Now you're gonna see that this description sounds a lot like someone familiar, but let's not jump the gun, let's see what they have to say in their own words and then we can speculate. Riz is described as a bit of a lone wolf, world-wise despite his young age, and able to handle anything life throws his way. This character is listed as a series regular with options. So that's the description, there is a bit more to this article and we'll come to that in a moment, but some fans have pointed out that Riz could be a codename for Ezra Bridger. There's definitely a phonetic similarity and also the fact that he matches this description very well. Ezra is a lone wolf and also, at this point in the timeline, he would be in his 20s, most likely between the ages of 27 and 29. But we have to wonder if Disney would be this transparent about it. Given that Mena Masood has already been cast or reportedly been cast, it's more than likely that Riz is a new character altogether. But if it is for Ezra Bridger, then I'm happy because it means that the show is finally getting underway. It's still in the writing stage and very early on and filming isn't going to begin until next spring. 2023 is set to be a big year for Star Wars, maybe not as big as 2022, but we are getting Ahsoka, the Acolyte and Rogue Squadron. And who knows, we might even get the Lando series. But let's be honest, I would imagine the fandom on the whole is most excited for Ahsoka. So now my dear friends, let's go back to the article because there is more. Daniel PRK added fuel to this rumour with his Ahsoka leaks back in April, including two character descriptions that many believe to be for Ezra and Grand Admiral Thrawn. But perhaps the most exciting part of the leak was the series description which references both Thrawn and Ezra. And here is the series description. Ahsoka Tano or Rosario Dawson is on the hunt for the evil Grand Admiral Thrawn in hope it will help her locate the missing Ezra Bridger, the young Jedi that disappeared with Thrawn many years ago. It was also announced recently that Hayden Christensen will be reprising his role as Anakin Skywalker aka Darth Vader in Ahsoka. Now I did make a video a couple of days ago expanding on my thoughts and theories of how Anakin is going to return in the Ahsoka show. So go check that out if you're interested, but otherwise, let's press on. The Illuminati also revealed that Ahsoka is casting for Barisofi, a Jedi who fell to the dark side and betrayed Ahsoka. We still don't know what became of Barisofi, there are a lot of theories out there that she became a Sith Inquisitor, and I think the Ahsoka series is the perfect place to expand upon this, especially if Anakin Skywalker is going to be back as a Force ghost. He could be a wise guide for Ahsoka, warn her, and also give her new intel. So going back to this character of Riz, the character description sounds remarkably similar to Ezra Bridger, especially if he's been separated from the family he built with the Rebels, which could indicate that this is a codename being used while Lucasfilm cast for Ezra. But I'm a bit skeptical because I think Mena Masood is playing Ezra, he seemed very odd in recent interviews as if he couldn't reveal something. We're just gonna have to wait and see, but we've been getting a lot of Ahsoka news recently and it's super exciting. Now if this character Riz is not Ezra Bridger, he could be someone that helps in the search for Ezra and Thrawn. With how similar he seems compared to Ezra, especially during the first season of Rebels, he could remind Sabine Wren of her old friend. This could inspire her to want to help or connect with him as she and the other Rebels did with Ezra in the animated series. Given the fact that the Ahsoka series is expected to take place after the events of the Mandalorian season 2, his world wariness could come from living under the oppression of the Empire, and it's possible that Ahsoka comes across him on her mission to help planets still being held 
held by the Imperial Remnant. The Ahsoka series is still largely shrouded in mystery, although every rumour and new report gives us more reason to be excited, with Dave Filoni continuing Ahsoka's story and now Anakin's Force Ghost story, and likely the story set up for the continuation of Star Wars Rebels, there is so much to look forward to. And if you've not seen Rebels, I urge you to do so. In my opinion, it's the best of Star Wars animation, or at least a very close tie with the Clone Wars seasons 5 and 7. If you've not seen it, it's going to be harder for you to understand the live action series going forward of the Mandalorian universe. Now, since Lucasfilm have to appeal to both diehard fans and casuals, I'm not sure how much deep cut stuff they're going to add in the Ahsoka series, but it is well worth becoming familiar with the characters of Star Wars Rebels and the storyline that's set up in the finale. I remember when I first saw Rebels, season 1 was a bit of a drag to get through, but once you're about halfway through season 2, you'll be hooked. I seriously, seriously recommend it. And if you're an expanded universe fan who hasn't seen Rebels, you're going to get a new perspective on Grand Admiral Thrawn. And speaking of him, I've always wondered if the Thrawn that we're going to see in the Ahsoka series is going to be more like the one that Timothy Zahn writes, or the one that we saw in Star Wars Rebels. Now if you're confused, I will say there's a very distinctive difference in their personality. And in my opinion, it all comes down to if Filoni is going to portray him as an evil villain or not. In the Zahn books, not just the original Zahn trilogy, but also in his more recent works, you get a very different side to Grand Admiral Thrawn, and it's not as simple as throwing him into the evil category. He's way more nuanced and complex, and I'd love to see how they handle that in live action. But either way, the series is in the best hands. Filoni is the showrunner, and Jon Favreau is executive producing. And I know I praise them a lot, but Favreau and Filoni have have proven themselves to be the two who understand the essence of Star Wars better than anyone else at Lucasfilm right now. After a bumpy few years, it's refreshing to see the work that they do and how it does justice to George Lucas's vision. Understanding the franchise at its core is not something that any old director could grasp by just giving them a Star Wars project. It's being able to understand the magic of the franchise and what George was saying with his stories. And yes, of course, there are others who are amazing like Bryce, Peyton, Deborah, and Rick, but for all intents and purposes, Filoni was the apprentice of George Lucas, and that's not an exaggeration, he literally worked alongside him and got hours and hours and hours of insight into Star Wars that no one else was gifted. The storytelling element of Star Wars going forward truly rests with him if we're going to get anything close to George Lucas's vision. He respects the franchise and knows how to use characters effectively. And with Jon Favreau's writing and producing skills, you can't go wrong. We're truly so blessed and lucky to be getting an Ahsoka series, and I'm here for it. So now, my dear friends, we're going to move on and talk about the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, because O'Shea Jackson Jr. has opened up about his role on Obi-Wan Kenobi after not being cast as Lando in Solo, A Star Wars Story. Now, we're just going to skim over this really quickly quickly because he didn't reveal too much about his role. He simply praised Deborah Chow and Ewan McGregor. When Collider spoke with O'Shea Jackson Jr. about his upcoming series Swagger, they also tried to find out some information about his work in Obi-Wan Kenobi. As expected, he was extremely tight-lipped and very careful not to spill any of the secrets. But we did learn that he's a massive Star Wars fan and he auditioned for Lando in Solo. When he didn't get that role, he was extremely disappointed and talked about giving up. So when he got called in by Deborah Chow, he was super excited to be involved in a Star Wars project. He also went on to praise the volume as an amazing tool of technology, and he was extremely impressed by some of the effects. Now we've heard this being said a million times by different actors on Obi-Wan Kenobi, and while we know what to expect in terms of the volume from The Mandalorian, it really seems like they've gone all out for Obi-Wan, especially on scenes on Tatooine. Remember that the last time we saw Hayden and Ewan in their characters was in 2005 in Revenge of the Sith. So think how far technology Technology has come since then, and by the time it comes out, we're truly in for something spectacular, at least visually. I just really hope that the series is going to blow our minds. So that, my dear friends, is pretty much everything we have for today's news update. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a massive welcome if you are, and also, if you're feeling generous, why not hit the join button down below, or even consider becoming a patron. The link is down there in the description, and you get exclusive videos not found here on YouTube, access to my Discord server, and and more. Just yesterday I did an extra news roundup for my patrons where we talked about Sasha Banks, the situation with her, rumours, announcements and much more. It's an amazing passionate community and we would be honoured if you would join us. But otherwise my dear friends, that's all from me for today. Have an amazing day no matter where you are in the galaxy. May the force be with you. I'm Star Wars Meg and I'll see you tomorrow.